Motown Council, please rise and join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. <coughs> Councilor Sullivan? Here. Councilor St. Clair? Here. Councilor Blaze? Here. Councilor Benedict? Here. Vice Chair Roy? Here. Um, because this is a special meeting, it does not follow the, the format of regular meetings, so there's no general public comments, but there will be certainly will be a public hearing on the first order. Order number 1357 is a 7 p.m. public hearing and second reading to amend the fiscal year 2014 budget as follows. Increase revenue tax, in key, I'm sorry, increase excise tax revenues by 350,000 from 3,850,000 to 4,200,000. Decrease municipal revenue sharing revenue by $326,432 from $1,108,644 to $782,212. Increase general purpose school aid by $788,038 from $3,471,253 to $4,259,291. Increase school employer retirement appropriations by $520,283 for a total school education gross budget, budget change from $38,954,233 to $39,474,516. to I could provide just a couple of introductory comments. All of these four uh, recommended amendments to the budget, two on the town side and two on the school side, are functions of the state budget process. Uh, as the council will recall, and uh, perhaps for the benefit of the public, uh, the council passed its budget and actually obtained voter validation uh, for the school budget uh, prior to the state budget being finalized. Uh, this is not an entire surprise. In fact, I think there were open communications, conversations among the school board and town council around um, these, these factors, now we know for certain what the effect of the state budget is. Uh, and in essence, um, there's a, a few modest changes. Uh, the net effect is a modest change on the town side um, regarding revenue. On the school side, the good news is there was a bit of a windfall, if you will, of uh, general purpose aid, additional general purpose aid to education <coughs> that more than offsets the cost, the additional cost for teacher retirement. Um, the net effect of these four amendments provides for a decrease uh, in the tax commitment of $291,323, and that equates to about an $0.08 cent reduction uh, in the tax rate projected on our assumed increase in value. And let me also add to that that the 520000 for the teacher retirement uh, amount of money was a decision, a recommendation from the Finance Committee and then the decision of the Council when the budget was voted upon uh, to uh, not include that in, uh, in, as, as an expense. At that point in time, the Appropriations Committee at the state level was still uh, discussing that issue, and it looked as though they were leaning towards uh, negating the governor's recommendation to reduce, I mean, to require that uh, obligation. Uh, and then somewhere between there and when they finally voted on the budget, um, they decided to uh, leave it intact. And so, therefore, we were uh, <coughs> then. Uh, faced with the additional $520,380 for the teacher retirement fund. So with those explanations, uh, we'll open it to public hearing. I remind you that you have three minutes, uh, and uh, we'll go from there. Open the public hearing. Uh, comment. Please state your name and your address, please. Yes, good evening. My name is Drew Guar, 26 Ocean Avenue. Um, I just, the, the general purpose fund, is it specifically uh, geared for retirement, for the uh, re retirement obligations? In other words, can that fund be applied to the entire education budget and then the, the amount that the town was going to allocate, 780000 can be stripped back to reduce our tax liability? Is that a possibility? Um, does that exist? Want me to yeah. answer? I, it, certainly, there are school finance folks that can pro perhaps answer that uh, more eloquently. But 
uh, essentially general purpose aid uh, is limited for use for educational purposes, so it's not limited in my opinion, my understanding to uh, the additional cost. Um, when the formula was rerun, uh, thankfully we benefited greater than we, sure. we had expected to. The, the reason why I'm asking is because in light of a new development, which is the pretty much the cancellation of the circuit breaker tax and rent refund. I mean, that's pretty much dead. Um, this year I qualified for it first time uh, ever, and uh, I still haven't received any notification of whether I qualify or not. But next year, my it's going to be the uh, main adjusted gross income of $40,000, and the max benefit, I think, is $300. So in light of that, in light of knowing that the circuit breaker program is pretty much effectively gone for all intents and purposes. In consideration of the seniors and the pensioners in this town, would it be possible to be able to take that 788000 general purpose fund and apply it to the entire school budget and then, you know, reduce the tax liability by $788,000 for, you know, town residents um, when it comes to the tax bill? Basically, eff effectively leaving the school board with what Ron Alquist had stated um, in June, you know, hey, look, if if the state doesn't come through with the um, uh, pension obligation meet, um, you're on your own, effectively, is what I believe he said in the forecaster. Um, because at that point, it was divulged that the school board had, had done some misappropriation of funding with the job acts money, and um, I think the, I think the council was rightfully a little upset that that information was not made to light during the budget negotiation. A lot of, a lot of parents, a lot of people, a lot of voters um, did not know that that had occurred. So I think that uh, I think the intent of Ron Alquist's um, uh, suggestion was, or implication was, hey, you know, school board, you know, you, you could have come clean with that information in light of that. Um, you're you're going to be on your own for your pension obligation if that comes to 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 fruition from the uh, LePage budget. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. I just wanted to bring up those points. You know, if the council could make recommendation to uh, apply that entire amount to our, our entire, if, if all funds being fungible, if that's a possibility, um, and reduce the residents' tax liability by 780000 that would be a big boon in light of the loss of that circuit breaker program this year. Thank you. Thank you. Chris Chiazzo, 17 Elmwood Avenue. Uh, for the record, I also remember the school board, but uh, I'm not speaking on their behalf tonight. I'm speaking as myself, as a resident of Scarborough. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the council, we gather here tonight for what will hopefully be the conclusion of a very tumultuous budget cycle. I've had the privilege of working closely with many of you during most, this most difficult year, and while the council and board may approach the budget development process from different perspectives, I sincerely believe that each and every one of you, along with my colleagues on the school board, have worked hard to bring balance to this process and have always done our very utmost to represent over the overall best interests of the town. I'm proud of the work we've done to open up the communications between the council and the board and was looking forward to taking some time during the summer break to recharge a bit uh, before returning in the fall to continue the work on improving the communications between our two governing bodies. Unfortunately, partisan politics in Augusta being what they are, uh, the budget was delayed until well after we as a town passed our budget. Unfortunately, yet another example of how Scarborough seems to be continually punished by the state for being both efficient and responsible. The good news is that even though the state has decided to pass the teacher retirement costs onto the local municipalities, Scarborough now finds itself in the envious position of receiving enough additional revenue from the state to more than offset these increases, at least for the current budget cycle. As a school board member, I must admit, I was very tempted to take all of the additional revenue and restore some of the programs we targeted for scale back as a result of the previous two rounds of budget discussions. But as I mentioned, we as a board were very conscious of the overall needs of the town, and after some debate, we passed the proposal that you now have in front of you to use the remaining surplus funds to offset the local tax burden. As I know we can all attest from the messages and comments we receive from constituents, there will always be extreme positions in every discussion. 
Some folks in our community may want to see the entire revenue surplus used to offset increased property, value, property taxes. Others may equally feel that the money is earmarked for education and the entire amount should be used to help restore the programs that have been reduced or eliminated. In order to govern effectively, however, compromise is essential. By definition, compromise means that everybody gives up something in order to get something. In my opinion, the proposal you have before you now is the best compromise and is truly the best interest of the town. So I'd urge you both to support it this evening with your vote, not only your vote, but I'd urge you to encourage your constituents to support it as well so that we can conclude the budget process and move forward with the important work of governing which we were elected to do. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments? Paula O'Brien, 20 Pond View. Um, I, like Drew, would like to see the amount, the entire amount applied to reducing the taxpayer burden as well. Um, the 200 and some odd thousand that they speak of to go back to the taxpayers actually results um, on a modest $250,000 home at this year's increases of almost $280 um, results in about $8. I mean, I think the first time when it was voted down, people were looking for a, a break, and with no circuit break, and from what I understand, there's going to be soon no more homestead exemption. Um, I don't know, over, you know, almost 32% in five years worth of property tax increases. It, it's just, I mean, I'm all for the schools and the teachers and the whole nine yards. I mean, it's just more than a lot of people can bear. I think. So I'd like to see the entire amount go towards reducing the tax burden. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Good evening. Jacqueline Perry, 215 Black Point Road, and a member of the Board of Education. If the town council were to legislate that the total amount of 700000 plus was used to reduce the total school budget, then the school department would then have to reduce its budget by $520,000 to pay for the teacher's retirement. Just keep that in mind. Secondly, serving on the Finance Committee has never been my forte. I did it early on in my career, and I just leave that to the youngsters and those folks with cal calculators who can add it up. But let me tell you this. At no time did the school department or the Board of Education misappropriate any monies, ever. Ever. That's number one. Number two, the application for the jobs money was approved by the state. It was after the fact that the people in the finance office at the State Department of Education came back and said, well, you shouldn't have used it that way. With no warning, with, out of the blue, Chris and I found out about it when we went to Augusta to testify. It was the first time. Never misappropriated the money. Thank you. Any other comments? Hearing none, I will close the public hearing. Move approval of order. 1357. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there a discussion? Yes. Question? Mm -hmm. I'd like to say um, that I fully support the school board's explanation of what happened. I understand it completely. Um, and uh, I hope a lot of my constituents um, trust my judgment in saying that I understand what happened. And it wasn't a misappropriation of <clears throat> excuse me, of funds. Uh, to that, um, the state um, has had their issues, and um, 
I think that no matter whether it's municipal or school, we have to be on our toes from now on um, to, to keep an eye on them as far as the, re the regulations and stuff. However, um, this has also um, put us in a, a bind, I believe, with having another election, um, which um, I fully support this measure. Um, the measure as it stands is uh, going to give the school the uh, $520,283 uh, $520, to fund the teachers' uh, uh, pensions that the state will no longer cover. Now, if we don't, if they, if the voters turn this down, there's going to be uh, repercussions in the school. There's going to be, uh, uh, they're going to have to adjust their budget. I'm sure there's going to be layoffs, okay? Some people might say, oh, well, that's fine. Well, I can guarantee you next year the school board will be back with a um, over a million dollar bill for us because now they have to fund the 520000 that they have to pay next year and plus looking to recover the programs that they cut this year. So it's not a win-win situa win situation if the voters turn this down. However, I'll, I will only res um, support one vote on this because this is the state's issue, and I'm, I don't think it's right unless the state wants to pay for election after election. Um, I just I just can't see us funding a second election if this fails. So that means that everybody that supports the schools needs to get off their butt and get out and vote this time, um, because. This is, this is no fault of the schools. This is no f fault of the town council. Uh, it's the fault of, um, well, our state, the, the way um, things have gone. So um, I fully support this measure, and uh, I'll be voting for it tonight to go to the voters. Thank you. Council, please. Uh, no comment. Councilor St. Clair? Sure. I have to, I pretty much agree with everything Councilor Sullivan said. I think it's imperative that people vote. I 100% I, I agree that it would be painful to have to go back a second time for this, and, and I don't think it's going to get very much support from a lot of people. So I, I would <laughs> quote you as saying if you support your schools, get off your butt and vote. And that's the best that we can do. And it's very easy. I, I get frustrated. You know, the school board's getting flack for this. We're getting flack for this. And I understand it. It's a very complicated process. It's not something that is easily explained either. So I know that there's a misconception out there as to what happened and how it happened. Um, it's just going to be really important that this vote goes through. It's just like last time. People need to vote. Councilor Benedict. <coughs> I think that... Boiling this down as simply as I can, uh, it comes down to a pay me now or pay me later. If we decide that we wanted to keep the money and put it all towards the tax fund, that's all well and good. But that doesn't help the school who's in a situation that they did not predict, they did not foresee, and they're not wrong for it. I think it fell into the oops, whoops, and uh-oh categories and they also have no control over it so if giving them the money it's not really giving money it's money that that is all accounted for and the balance which they could have kept if they wanted to they turn around and said to put the leftover money back in to the town budget and for that reason, where it's just a situation if we don't pay it this year, we'll pay it next year. It will end up getting paid. And if anybody has a better idea, I'd love to hear it. But I think that for initially dealing with something that comes in front of us appropriately and moving on, that a positive vote, and everyone has to get out, 
and prove, yes, we agree with that. And for that reasons, I'm in favor of this. Thank you. Yeah. Council Sullivan. I had one thing I forgot to ask. Um, I had a question. Um, the, if, the, if it was turned down, the total of 788.038, that wouldn't, uh, the, none of that would go towards um, this year. taxpayer relief this year. It would go into the fund for next year. So correct. It would uh, it would be realized as excess revenue beyond projection, and ultimately it would be shown as fund balance. And theoretically, in future years, it could be converted to tax relief, but not in fiscal year 14. Right. So you mean the thing is, is 14. that 788.038 would be um, who knows how it's going to be spent the following year. But with this, we know how it's going to be spent this year. Um, let's see. Uh, there's going to be... What was the uh, balance that was going to be? 291, 323. Yep. Okay, thank you. It's going to be directly applied towards uh, tax relief. If this doesn't pass, there'll be nothing towards tax relief this year. And who? And like I said, who knows how it's going to be spent next year? There could be a total different change on the council. Thank you. I guess a couple of things that I'd like to say. Uh, Nobody has given a, a, a number. Uh, the, as the budget has been passed to date, the tax rate per mill is $14.88. If we apply, if, if this gets voted yes and we apply the $291,323, that would bring the tax rate to $14.80. Um, the tax assessor still has to commit the taxes in August, and that usually occurs. Uh, or the end of August or the, the, first, uh, the first meeting in September. Uh, and that's going to very much depend upon uh, the, the town value. Um, so I always try to keep my glass half full and hope that uh, it will be higher than the prediction of the town manager when he did the budget, which was $15 million in increased um, valuation. And uh, if it's $20 million, then it may be a couple more cents. I think we had figured that out as we went through the pro property thing, um, went through the finance. Um, the a couple of other things while we're discussing the homestead exemption for, is still intact. Okay, that that has not gone away. It's the circuit breaker that's the problem, and as Tom has been finding out information, there was also an, in, an inadvertent change that makes local programs invalid after tomorrow. And the new program starts January 1. So if you have, if people, we sent letters out to uh, a number of the residents and if the applications aren't in by tomorrow, uh, then they can't apply after that. So that's, that's something else that happened at the state level. Um, and I, I guess I'd like to comment, too, at the state level, there was no misappropriated funds, and I will clearly state that again. Um, little did the school board know that when they took the stimulus money that two years hence down the road, um, it was going to be reflected in how much money the school was going to receive in funding. Uh, and and then the way in which they applied it as, as uh, Jackie said, uh, was okayed by the state. They said absolutely okay. And then when the issue came back up in February, they said, oh, no, it's really not okay. Um, you know, um, and that's the way it's going to be. And so that was, the, I think the, the only thing that the council was uh, concerned about was not being told in February that that's what happened. But there absolutely was no misappropriation of funds on the school department uh, side at all. Um, <clears throat> so certainly I am in support of this. I think uh, eight cents is eight cents. Uh, if, you know, the voters uh, get out to vote, just think about that because um, there will be, you know, at least the eight cents and potentially a little bit more. Um, one of the things that we're doing in the Finance Committee, we're meeting two times in September and two times in October with all the departments, the major departments of the town, 
to say, you know, what's the most important things that your department does and what are the least important things that your department does? Can we do it differently? Can we eliminate this or, can, or that or another thing? Um, so that we give some guidance and direction to the departments as to what we want their budget to look like next year. Uh, and uh, so hopefully that, <coughs> that, that addition to the process may help us with, with, the next, with the next budget because it will be back again before we know it. Uh, the departments start working on their budgets in November and then they present it to the council starting in March. Uh, so <coughs> there's a lot of work to be done and we truly as councilors understand the, uh, the difficulty that a lot of our residents, particularly our elderly residents are having particularly in the relationship to the circuit breaker. Um, the circuit breaker program was absolutely raped. Um, and we were hoping that it was going to survive the Appropriations Committee. Uh, and again, it was another one of those things at the last minute, the 11th hour, um, they, um, they really uh, devastated uh, that uh, process. And inadvertently said, we can't have our own circuit breaker at a local level. So they are working on that as we speak. And hopefully they can... Uh, do some uh, amendments to that circuit breaker because certainly it is a, is a great help to a lot of our uh, a lot of our residents as well as the medication program. They went from two dollars and fifty cents a prescription to forty eight dollars a prescription. So they whammied the seniors in many many ways, and we as a town have set aside one hundred and thirty thousand dollars for tax relief for our for our people that are sixty two and older. So. So anyway, I'm, I am in support of this, and I think that uh, I, would, I would ask that uh, any resident that has questions about it, please contact a counselor or contact the town manager or contact the school department uh, for any clarification because the ream of misinformation that is out there in the community, as is evidenced by the uh, very um, disrespectful, <laughs> vulgar, emails that we have been receiving this week uh, is unbelievable. There is so much misinformation. And so if you have a question about the budget, if you have a question about Circuit Breaker, for goodness sakes, call us. Call the town manager. Talk with the town clerk. We'll give you the answers. Please don't listen to scuttlebutt out there because there's too many crazy stories out there. Um, but we really, th this week I have gotten some very disrespectful uh, emails and that's not necessary, I don't think. We, the councilors, are trying to be extremely respectful to the citizens of the community that we serve and we would expect the same thing in return. So uh, hopefully, we'll, you know, if you have questions, call Hi. us. Can I add something to that real quick? Sure. I just want to say it's far easier for us to respond to emails that are factual than when we're, uh, it's disturbing actually, some of the emails that we've received. Um, I, saw, I saw the height of it during the budget, the original budget proposal and this week alone, uh, clearly there's been a couple other besides tonight hot button issues that have been going on, but um, it's very concerning to, get, to read some of these emails and it's much easier for us to respond to factual emails. Um, be respectful of us and, and we can then in turn respond to your emails much easier. And there are some e emails that uh, we, can't, we can't answer at this point right. in time relative to uh, uh, tax assessments. We, we, you know, that, that is just not something that uh, counselors should be involved in. So, um, and we right. try to respect that because we don't want to put politics into that component it's too important. So. I'd, I'd just like to add one thing, uh, and I'll speak for everybody sitting at this table. We don't need to be reminded to stand up and do our patriotic duty <laughs> and to do what's best for the town and blah, 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 blah. We are all well aware of what needs to be taken place, and we just do our best that can do it. And if you want to do your best, call us. Uh, going back on the old standby, if something smells, it's probably rotten. If you don't understand it, call us, email us, and ask us if we could find out for you. 
And that's not a problem. I, I expect that, I, and I have no problem with it. But all of us here this week got enough emails on telling us what our job is, and the misinformation is just incredible, as Judy said. So uh, we don't need to be extremely sterned upon. Thank you. Any other comments about the order, the budget? This is a roll call vote. Councilor Sullivan? Yes. Councilor St. Clair? Yes. Councilor Blaze? Yes. Councilor Benedict? Yes. Vice Chair Roy? Yes. Under new business order number 1359 is act to set the date, time, and location of the school budget validation referendum for Tuesday, August 13, 2013. So moved. Second. Second. Any comments or questions about that? All those in favor? Thank you. With that, a motion to adjourn, please. Yeah, just so moved. Wait a minute. Uh, just, just to remind oh, when the oh, polls are open. Their polls such. are open uh, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. It'll be here at Town Hall. Uh, for Tuesday, August 13th. Mm -hmm. And is, are there absentee, absentee ballots, ballots available yes. as of tomorrow? That's correct. Okay, so absentee uh, ballots are, are available as of tomorrow, and then the polls are open on the 13th as of 8 a.m. 7, 7, 7 a.m. 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Motion to adjourn. Oh. All those in favor. Thank you. Thank you. The meeting is adjourned.